chapter effects of heat on substances now heat is a form of energy heating brings about a change of state a change in volume and chemical changes the most obvious effect of heat on substances is the change of state when a solid is heated it melts and converts into liquid state equally when a liquid is heated it vaporizes into gas when a solid liquid or gas is heated it usually expands thus increasing in volume observe a balloon that is tied over the mouth of the bottle filled with boiling water the balloon gets inflated due to the expansion of air showing a change in volume certain substances undergo chemical changes when heated to form new substances the behavior of matter in response to heat can be explained by the kinetic theory of matter the kinetic theory of matter forms the basis of the theoretical model of matter according to this theory all matter is made up of tiny particles that are in a continuous state of motion the motion occurs because the particles possess kinetic energy which is the energy of motion the larger the kinetic energy the more the movement Particles in solid state are tightly packed together in a regular repeating pattern, leaving very little space between them. The kinetic energy of the particles is very small. The forces of attraction between the particles are very strong, and the only movements they make are tiny vibrations to and fro. This is why solids are rigid and have a definite shape. If a stone is placed in a box, it does not change its shape. When a solid is heated, the heat supplied increases the kinetic energy of the particles, making them vibrate more. At a temperature called the melting point, the kinetic energy is large enough to weaken the forces of attraction between the particles and acquire some level of freedom. The solid melts into liquid. In the liquid state, particles are closely held together but are not in a fixed pattern. Rather, they move freely and have a greater space between each other. Because of this greater space, the forces of attraction between the particles are weaker than in the solids. The kinetic energy is large but not sufficient for absolute freedom. This is why liquids have definite volumes but no definite shape. When the liquid is heated, the kinetic energy increases, making the particles vibrate more until they overcome the forces of attraction and break loose. The liquid boils into vapor. Matter in the gaseous state has no definite shape, no volume. In the gaseous state, the particles are far apart. There is greater space between the particles and they move about randomly with infinite freedom. Due to the huge spaces between the particles, there are no forces of attraction. Now, the kinetic theory of matter can be supported by several observations. First, since the particles in matter are in a state of motion, it means there exist spaces between the particles. We can prove this by using the example of salt dissolved in water. When salt dissolves in water, the particles of salt get in between the spaces between the particles of water. You will know this because there is no change in volume of water. This confirms that the particles have spaces between them. Another important feature is compressibility. If we take three syringes and close the mouth of each syringe with a cork, we fill one syringe with chalk powder, another with water, and leave the other empty. We insert a piston and try to compress the material inside the syringe. 
you will see that the syringe with solid is not compressible because solid particles do not have enough spaces between them. The syringe with water is slightly compressible because there is some space between the water particles. The syringe which is empty is easy to compress because the particles in a gas that is air have very large spaces between them than in solids and liquid. Another proof is diffusion. When a perfume is released in the air, the fragrance spread very fast. This is because the gaseous particles in the perfume moves very fast in between the spaces between the particles of air. Liquids have slower diffusion rates because the spaces in between the particles are smaller than those in the gases. In solids, diffusion is negligible because the spaces between the solid particles are extremely small. In fact, a solid cannot diffuse through another solid. So now, let's go back to the effect of heat on substances. And the first effect is change of state. We start with an experiment to observe the change in temperature during heating. Now, we take some ice cubes in a beaker. We suspend a thermometer into the ice cubes and note its temperature. It's zero degrees Celsius. Then we heat the ice cubes and record the temperature after every minute. Keep stirring the ice water mixture constantly so that the temperature is uniform throughout. We observe that the thermometer reading remains constant at 0 degrees Celsius though heat is being supplied constantly. The temperature remains constant till all the ice melts into water at 0 degrees Celsius. Continue heating the water. We observe that the temperature is increasing. Record the rising temperature till the water starts to boil. Continue heating. The boiling water gets converted to steam. Observe that the thermometer reading remains constant at 100 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of water. That is, there is no change in temperature. This experiment shows that temperature remains constant whenever there is a change of state. But what happens to the heat energy being supplied? The energy supplied is used to break the intermolecular forces of attraction between the particles and therefore there is no increase in temperature whenever there is a change of state. If we draw a graph of temperature against time, we will obtain this curve. At region AB, the temperature remains constant until all the ice has melted. The heat supplied is used to weaken the intermolecular forces of attraction between the ice particles. This temperature is called melting point. At region BC, the temperature rises steadily as heat energy supplied causes an increase in the kinetic energy of the particles and thus makes them move faster. In region CD, the temperature remains constant again until all the water is converted to steam. The heat supplied is used to weaken the forces of attraction between the particles rather than increase the kinetic energy of the particles. This temperature is called the boiling point.